Rights. I'm Michelle Wright with the CalWhispersCreativeCards.com and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Today we're going to be playing with the ever so gorgeous Wonder of the Season Specialty Designer Series paper. And it's specialty because it's got foil. It's got the red foil and the gold foil and on the back it's black and white. Now, it goes without saying that these sheets would be stunning in craft, uh, scrapbooks. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. But I wanted to use them, and I wanted to show a lot of it off, so I did it on a slimline card. What I'm going to show you today is how to think outside the box when you're using these. So what I did was I took one of the sheets, and I cut it down where it's all framed in. And as always, in the top of the eye and below in the description, you're going to find a link back to my blog post. I'm going to have all the measurements, so no worries about measurements, okay? So, I cut it down, so I'm framing a section of one of the sheets. Now, I did the original one in the red, and I'm going to do today's in gold. But I want you to think outside the box. The foil color on the red ones matches perfectly with our red and green foil sheets that we have. So this is the red foil sheet. And you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, you wasted all of that foil behind there. No, I didn't. And I can't show you the back of this one, but I will tell you what I did was, I thought outside the box. Instead of putting it in my trimmer, I could have just cut that section out, but I grabbed my stitched rectangle dies and I threw a bunch of them in here, cut them out, all right? So, once I had one of them cut out, I thought, mm, I'm not liking that rectangle side. So I went ahead and grabbed my stitch nested labels and used one of those and cut this section out here. So underneath this designer series paper, there's big gaps in this foil because I'm gonna use it for something else. And I also had this piece cut from underneath there. So what did I do here? I went ahead and put some of our foam adhesive sheets on the back and I've cut Merry Christmas for another card. So what I want you to do is think outside the box. We all have scraps. We use those scraps. So here's what I did for today's. Here's the sheet that's gonna be the background layer. I knew I had some projects coming up that I wanted some two inch circles, so I went ahead and cut them out. No, I'm not using those on today's project, but I will use them in the future, so I'm not wasting that. And I could go in here if I had wanted to and cut a few more of different circles out, but for today's design, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Here, this was in my scrap. One inch, well, it may not even be one inch. No, it's a half inch. It's a little under a half inch of gold foil. Well, I keep that in my little scraps with my foils, and I'm gonna use that as well. So, you can see here, I have raised up the Merry Christmas here, and if you're wondering where Merry Christmas comes from, it comes from the word wishes die. So today is all about thinking outside the box, different ways to use this gorgeous designer series paper. But I'll have all these items linked as well. But I'm gonna change it up today. I went ahead and took the stitched rectangle die, because I'm gonna make this one look just a little bit different. And I'm going to use the Best Year stamp set. I love this. It does come in a bundle with the uh, Best Plaid Builder dies. And if you buy the bundle, you save 10%. But I'm just using the Warm Wishes for a Happy Christmas. So this is a super simple card. And I want to show you just how simple. And we're going to put it together. So let's get busy. And hopefully, I'll get those creative juices flowing for you. So... I'm gonna bring in my embossing buddy because I'm gonna do some heat embossing. I'm just showing you a different way. Just because I did one thing here doesn't mean you have to do that same thing. Now, I always think it's easier to take the VersaMark. You get a better coverage if you take it to your stamp. So I'm gonna get that lined up best I can. I'm gonna come right over the top. Stamp that down. Now let's bring in our gold embossing powder. I'm 
There we go. Got a little piece right there. Now I'm gonna bring in my cardboard with my foil on it. You guys know that's my handy dandy, super cheap tool to heat that from the back while I'm heat embossing it. So let me do that. And if you're new to heat embossing, when everything is shiny, you know that the powder has melted, okay? So watch how quickly this comes together. Now I'm using the Thick Whisper White for my card base. I always use thick when I'm using it for a card base. That's a personal preference. Now for this, we're gonna flip it over. I'm gonna use liquid adhesive. I just think that that's gonna give me more control because I'm gonna be sliding it around. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just put some in between here. And then we will put this on. And then I can line it up just like that. And everyone has different dimensions for their slimline cards. So, like I said, you can grab the ones that, that I use. This fits in a number 10 business envelope, if you're wondering. That's why I decided to make them the size they are. That wasn't real smart because, see, some of that oozed out. We're all good. We're good. Now, I want to take this strip here because I want to figure out how do I want to position this. And I like... If I cover these words, how it's got these little beautiful uh, designer elements. So I'm going to just center that up. And like I said, this was a piece of scrap. So I want to center this up right about there. I'm going to hold it up here for a second. Let that grab and dry. Flip it over from the back. Bring your snips in and just cut straight along from the back. That way you're not worried about cutting into because you can see exactly what you're doing. All right. So looky there. That's all I have left. Now let's go ahead and place this on our card base. So if you love this designer series paper as much as I do, this could be a great option. And you can grab them, figure out how you wanna cut them apart and use them. Cause I personally think they are stunning. Now I'm gonna pick it up so I can look to see if I've got it good and straight. Then I'm gonna push it down. And this kind of pushes my adhesive out to all the edges just like that. Here's my final element. And just to keep the postage down on this, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put some adhesive right across this foil like that so I don't have to worry. And then I'm gonna place that right there. And I can line it up. Just like that. Give it just a second to dry because that is foil. And then, because the camera was in my face, that was a little lower than what I expected. So here's some more of that thinking outside the box. Go with it. Let's look here and I'm going to grab my champagne rhinestones because they're gonna be close enough. If I can get them open here, here we go. And I'm gonna put some champagne rhinestones on here with my take my pick tool. I think I will do a large one here in the center. And then I'm gonna work my way down and I'm gonna put one on this side, one on this side. just like that. Let's go for it. 
Let's just go for it. Oh, love it. So think outside the box with this stunning paper. Scrapbooking, absolutely. Cards, you bet. Just get a little creative. That sentiment is so pretty. Remember, we use the sentiment from the best year, which is available in a bundle with the best plaid builder. And I will have everything else listed as well in that eye above or the description below. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and click that bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. If you live in the United States and you're looking for an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your gal and sure appreciate your business. As always, I've listed two more videos at the end of this one that I think you may enjoy. I hope you have a wonderful day and happy crafting.